You want to pull down six figures working in GIS? In this video, I'm going to show you how I was able to get there working for a local government. And you know local governments are typically known for high job security and good benefits, but usually lower pay than the private sector. So let's get you some chops and six figures. So today I thought I'd get you out of the office. I'm sure you're tired of seeing the background of my shelves and behind me. And I've got my lovely wife with me. This is Amy. She's my wife of 27 years. Hello. We're out here doing a preparation hike, getting ready to summit the highest peak in Utah, which is King's Peak. It's about 13,500 feet elevation, and it's going to equate to 27 miles in a single day. Last year we did it with a three-day, two-night backpacking trip. And it so nearly killed us. So we're going to push ourselves and do it in a day. Wish us luck. So welcome to Uinas Mountains. You don't know where they are. That's uh, northern Utah, northeastern Utah. Beautiful, beautiful country. We love it up here. So welcome to the outdoors and uh, let's, let's get into the video. I've been working for a local government for the past 21 years at the time of this filming. I love working there and I love working with such great people. The benefits are great. I have great health insurance, dental, great job security. We even get to check out a ski pass to one of the local ski resorts. However, the pay has sometimes been a source of frustration. Sometimes pay increases don't make it into the budget, especially during an economic downturn like the one we're having right now. And I hope you're all healthy and well, by the way. So how was I able to increase my pay even during an economic downturn? During the last US recession, uh, that hit our family pretty hard. We had just had an incident in our family that racked us up a bunch of hospital debts. Everything turned out fine, but I spent a lot of time thinking about how are we going to get out up from under that debt. And two things came to me. I can ask for a pay increase and a title increase at work, and I could start a side hustle doing GIS for small communities, small towns and cities, and maybe even small counties. So even though I brought you outside, we might have a little wind noise and, and some background noise, and I hope you'll forgive me for that. But I think being outside is a lot nicer than being in my office. Those of you who are trying to get a GIS job right now are probably saying, well, what about me? I don't even have a job in GIS. Well, there's no reason you can't start a side hustle right now as a full-time hustle. I know lots of guys who do that. They work from home, they work their own hours, they have steady clients, as well as jobs that they get by word of mouth. Or you can get a full-time job doing something else that does a little bit of GIS and look for a full-time GIS job and start a side hustle in the meantime. Just remember, any GIS experience you have is gonna help you get that full-time GIS gig. So let's talk about asking for a pay raise or a title bump. It's never easy to ask, but I'm gonna tell you this. If you don't ask for it, it's not gonna come find you. It's not gonna fall into your lap. Your boss isn't gonna say, hey, Bob needs a raise. Bob needs a title increase. You've gotta ask for those types of things and it shows your employer assertiveness, so that's always a good thing. It might be a long shot, but it's worth taking. I mean, you might end up with a pay increase, so that's always a good thing. Now, before you go marching into your supervisor's office and asking for a raise, you need to make sure of a couple things first. You wanna make sure you're a valued employee. You wanna minimize chatting with your coworkers and surfing the internet. You wanna make sure you're a go-getter, a self-starter. Go the extra mile, look for ways that you can improve your efficiency in the work that you do now. Take on a project, be a team leader in something and make sure that your employer sees that you're a valued employee. Make sure you're being an employee that they feel deserves a reward. Then pick your moment, gauge your supervisor's mood, make sure they have some time to talk to you, or maybe take them to lunch, and then have some points that you wanna bring up. Things like your loyalty, how you did on such and such project, how you were a leader in this project, how you saved money by implementing this process, whatever you've done, to be that good employee that you think deserves a raise. So your supervisor may not be able to tell you yes right then and there. They may have to talk to their supervisor and that's a good sign. It means they're willing to consider it. Or they may just want their supervisor to be the bad guy that says no. Either way, you've got some more time and they're thinking about it. If they say yes, that's great. Now you can negotiate the percentage of increase or they may just come back with an offer that they're willing to give you and you might just have to take that. If they say no, don't just walk away with your head down. Ask them what you can do to get a yes answer. Or maybe you could negotiate 
at the beginning of next fiscal year or a title increase and a title increase could equate to a pay increase when they do market studies. I've had that happen in the past. Just remember your best advocate is you. Your supervisor has a lot going on and they're not always thinking about your next career move. So be that good employee, work hard, be assertive and ask. You're never gonna get something you don't ask for. Now let's discuss my side hustle. I realized with the development of ArcGIS Online that now small cities and towns could have server type benefits without all the cost of having a server, expensive software to run that server, or the maintenance of that machine, and worrying about backing it up and all that trouble. All that's taken care of by ArcGIS Online in the background, and you don't even have to worry about it. And it's cheap. You get so much value for so little with ArcGIS Online. You can build web mapping applications, you can have web maps, you can collaborate on things in a, an organization. You get a lot for your money with ArcGIS Online. And I'm not getting paid by Esri here. It's just a great value for such a small organization. You can have the benefits of a big city that they've had for years with GIS server software. Now small cities and towns can have that with very minimal cost. And city managers are always looking for more improved services for less cost. So I figured there was a very good market for my services to those smaller cities and towns. So those small cities and towns couldn't afford a full-time GIS person. So I offered my services as an independent contractor that would get paid a certain amount of hours a month at a certain rate to do GIS work for that organization. And it seems to work out really well that way. So I started by purchasing a standard license of ArcGIS desktop. That gave me ArcMap and its other associated programs. And then I also bought a gaming computer that could handle the heavy graphic content of GIS. So with your software, your computer, and your GIS know-how, you're ready to go with the GIS consulting business that has very little overhead. One other thing I had to do was I had to fill out a form with my full-time employer, letting them know I was starting this side hustle and then it wouldn't affect my work with them. While I was doing all that, I was making a list of potential clients. How I did that is I looked at cities with a population of about 5,000 to 15,000 people. I looked at their website to see what their zoning map looked like. If it was a PDF map done by some engineering firm, uh, I put them on the list and then I made a note of who I could contact in that organization, the mayor, the planning director, whoever I thought had heard of GIS and knew of its benefits. Once I had my list of potential clients, I started sending out emails stating that I saw that they had a zoning map that was a PDF map done by an engineering firm and that I could move them to an interactive online map that would save them a lot of time answering phone calls about zoning questions and that I could do it at a significantly lower cost than what they were paying the engineering firm. And city administrators are always looking for ways to cut costs and having better services. So they, I got quite a few responses to the, to the emails that I sent out. So my first client was actually the city I live in. And the mayor lived in my neighborhood, so he knew me. So when I talked to him about GIS for the city, he had heard about it at a conference he'd been to. So he was willing to, to hear about it, so I gave my pitch and he really liked it, sold it to the city council, and they hired me as an independent contractor under professional services so they didn't have to put it out to bid. So that worked out great for me. Networking is part of every business. Start with the connections you have now, and then try to make new connections that you can have for future clientele. So you might want to start out with the cities and towns that are close to you, because geography does matter. I found it easier to pitch to cities that were close and they weren't concerned about me having to travel very far to, to meet with them or to come do field work. I also found it better to pitch to one person, not a city council. City councils, when you get five people in a room, they can't agree on anything or make any kind of a decision. I had one city council say, uh, we, can't we get volunteers to do that work? So pitch to one person who knows what GIS is, get them on board, show them the cost benefits, 
mean, you're going to save them a ton of money over what they're paying an engineering firm or a full-time person and then have them sell it to the city council. So you might find yourself pitching to the city that has a guy who's been working there for 25 years and their water system is completely in his head and he's going to retire soon. I knew a city that had a guy who knew the electric system and he retired, but they would keep calling him and asking him questions, but then he died. And so they didn't have all of that knowledge. So you can use that as a pitch, say, I'm proposing getting the water system or the sewer system or the storm drain system out of somebody's head and onto a map that you can access both in the office and on a phone. You may encounter cities that are happy with the way things are, and you can use that opportunity to educate them on why GIS is important for such a small organization, how it can make them more efficient, and how it can get data into their hands and on their phones and, and more accessible. So how are you gonna get paid as an independent GIS contractor? I prefer billing my clients an hourly rate for a set number of hours a month. I have had to bid a couple of jobs and you may be asked to bid a project. And when you do that, gauge the best you can about how many hours it's gonna take you and use the rate you have come up with for yourself and then increase it by a significant percentage because I've done a couple jobs, bid the couple jobs, and I was low on both of those jobs. However, one of those jobs turned into a regular monthly client. So sometimes a low bid can get you in the door for regular monthly work. So that's how I started my own GIS business and increased my income by quite a bit. If you have questions about this process, let me know in the comments. If you have a topic you want me to cover in a future video, hit me up down below. Let me know what you want to hear about. If I helped you get inspired to start your side hustle, give this video a thumbs up. You want to know where we are? If I get a thousand likes, I'll reveal where we are. It's a beautiful place and hardly anybody here. You can see there hasn't been anybody in the background and it's a Saturday. So I get a thousand likes, I'll give you the trail to get here. So thanks for joining me in the beautiful Uinta Mountains and thanks Amy for being my camera person today and dealing with all of my outtakes. And as always, subscribe, like, ring that bell. I'm gonna be hitting 500 subs soon and I'm gonna celebrate by giving away one of these magnetic globes. You're gonna to wanna to be notified of how that works and how you can qualify. So like, subscribe, and thanks for watching. So I love the Uinta Mountains. I've been coming up here since I was a kid. When I was going to school at Utah State, hey Aggies all the way, go Aggies, go Aggies, hey, hey, hey. I'd go up to the library and just pour through the map drawers and look at these maps of the Uinta Mountains and other places that I wanted to go. So I loved maps and that's kind of what got me into doing GIS in the first place.